everybody. My name is Zach Bowler. I'm the owner of Real Talk Films. Uh, we do a lot of work out of New Haven, but we're based primarily out of North Branford. I work with musicians, artists, do a lot of work for social media sites, um, build little commercials for anybody who's got anything to push on a digital platform. It's sort of like the social revolution that's going on right now, and I notice that people are spending more than 50% of their time putting their effort into developing their online relationships as opposed to their person-to-person -person relationships. So um, I grab the camera kind of in attempts to kind of make the transition a little easier for people, you know. Um, I think a lot of the online market doesn't really have a lot of trust in it yet, and I think the videos do a good job at kind of showing people for what they really are, and that's just people, you know, just real people real advertisements, real talk. You know, creativity is kind of a funny word. Um, it has multiple different definitions and there are so many different types of creativity. So I, I think to limit it to one definition of the word, you know, kind of wouldn't do it any justice. I mean, there are people who are really, really good at creating things, you know, starting from scratch and having a vision and creating things. And then there are people who are creative in a sense that you know, they have a very unique perspective of the world and the, the way they see things and the way that they think things are. Um, a lot of people don't try to be creative and they just give, you know, their, their observations on life, you know, and it's just a very unique perspective that kind of yields the definition or the title, I guess, of, you know, a creative. You know, a diff obviously it's a subjective word that I enjoy the process of creating a lot of times more than the actual product itself, you know, and the final outcome. Uh, and I think with creativity too, it's, it's also imperative to kind of view everything that you do as a form of art. I take my time, and I think that creative process is something that, you know, should be valued, and it should be respected, you know, and it's something that you can never compromise. Creativity could strike at any moment, you know, inspiration comes at the, the most strangest of times. Uh, and I credit a lot of my, you know, success to my BlackBerry. You know, I, my memo pad in my lap and my BlackBerry, excuse me, is just full because I'm constantly on it. You know, I had a two-year upgrade and uh, the option to switch over to an iPhone, and I stayed with the BlackBerry because I, I need the keypad, I like the, the actual physical keyboard of the BlackBerry that I could just hammer out, you know, 100 words per minute because when it hits, you know, you need to get the idea. I mean, the same holds for Notebook. I know a lot of people who create things and, and are, you know, always coming up with new ideas or concepts. They have notepads and they're always with a pen. You know, whatever it is that you do, it's, it's necessary that you're ready when an idea strikes because, like I said, it, it comes at the most random times. And obviously the most important part of the creative process is taking your idea, you know, on a conceptual level in your phone and, you know, spending time to create something tangible from an idea, you know, that's, that is the real creative process. And the, uh, I remember the first time I grabbed the camera, I was like 10 years old, and uh, we shot a music video in my backyard. It was like this corny, like, hip-hop song that me and my boys did together, but we shot this music video in my backyard. And uh, I think that was the first time I really grabbed the camera. And then uh, in middle school, when Jackass came out, that was just the shit, you know, because our moms hated it so much. Um, and it just kind of gave us the, the affirmation, I guess, just to kind of do dumb stuff and just grab it on camera. So we were constantly just doing dumb stuff, you know, building big jumps with our bikes, you know, uh, climbing trees, whatever, but we were just always grabbing it on camera. And uh, I think that was like an early appreciation for making films. About a year and a half ago, though, I, I took a class with Derek Taylor, and um, our assignment was to make these videos. Uh, so what I did, I had a, one of my good friends owns a barbershop in Out East Haven, uh, Michael Anthony's Barbershop, by the way. Uh, so I did a little video for them, and uh, we kind of turned it into like a commercial. You know, we did like this interview aspect to it. Um, and I threw it on YouTube, and like in the first week or something, it got like 300 views. So I was like, you know, I'd probably turn this into some money. So I linked up with Mike, who's the owner, and um, we kind of just said, hey, you know, if I can do some more film stuff for you, you know, build your, your online presence, you know, maybe we could, you know, figure something out in terms of payment. Uh, and it worked out well. And I, I realized that 
you know, I could do this full time, you know, or maybe not full time, but something that would bring me money immediately. Um, so the class kind of, you know, show, you know, shed some light on the possibilities of doing film for, for a job. I think the, the major thing that I can attribute to uh, my skills progressing would probably be competition, you know, and the need to stay relevant in a really, really quickly changing market. Just because there are a thousand really crazy editing tools or layering effects, you know, doesn't necessarily mean that you should use them. You know, I think it, it's really important, not only in filmmaking, but like in any aspect of a career, to really get comfortable at the basics and, and the things that you're, you're good at and to develop your own style based on, you know, working out the kinks, you know, and, and getting comfortable with your style. I see my, my films now have a little bit more of a comfortable feel to them, um, but I also like to look at the, my like original films and the things that I started out doing, and I, I kind of like those more. Um, there's more of like, a, like an anxious and kind of like an unsure feel to a lot of the different, uh, you know, cuts I make or the edits that I make. You know, and, and I could see that I was a different person, you know, editing those films. And it's cool to kind of compare and contrast where I was, you know, in my life when I made those films as, you know, compared to where I am now. I mean, there's definitely always, you know, an element of collaboration on every project. Um, I mean, obviously, they, a client trusts me to do my job, but they also have a lot of things that they wish to, you know, kind of be carried out and to be, you know, present in their videos. Um, I have a strong background in advertisement and marketing and, and you know, promotion and so I kind of see things differently than just your average filmmaker. You know, I, I definitely tailor the videos uh, to a client and I, everything is situational. You know, I've done all types of stuff and, it, and every project is something new and everything's situational and, and I'm, I'm open for anything, you know, and that's what I think is uh, super important just to be open to new ideas and to new things. I haven't, I haven't really ran into any major conflicts um, with any client or anything like that. I'm super easy going, and it, you know. Uh, we did run into a little um, discussion over, uh, I shot a music video for a, a hip hop artist out of Hartford, and he wasn't thrilled about one of the scenes that I had written into the script in the music video. Uh, so we kind of had to tailor the, the, the direction of the video, you know, based on the fact that he didn't want to be involved in that scene. Uh, so it wasn't really a major issue. Um, like I said, I don't take anything personally. Um, I'm here to help other people. So we worked together, we worked it out, and uh, the music video came out great. And he was happy. I, I definitely stress how important it is to find influence and inspiration in life in itself. You know, as corny as that sounds, I'm, I'm inspired by conversations with people there are some, some really, really awesome people out there who have really unique perspectives on life. I draw motivation from women <laughs> all the time. I draw, I draw motivation uh, from culture in general. You know, I like to see people's, people's adaptations of culture, you know, how it reflects on them as a person and how they reflect it as an institution. I don't think anybody's actually inspired my filmmaking in general. Uh, filmmaking in itself is just such a personal thing, you know, no two shots are ever alike. You know, there are different times, there are different angles, no matter where you are, it's, nothing is ever the same. So I think that in terms of filmmaking, nobody has really inspired me. Uh, I definitely have a handful of directors and filmmakers that I love and respect and, and you know, maybe have tried to emulate their style um, in the past, but I don't think anybody is directly influence my filmmaking because I don't think you can influence filmmaking. Uh, I actually just finished up uh, my second music video, uh, second ever Real Talk video. Uh, an artist named Babel out of Hartford, we just finished up uh, his video. It was a lot of fun, really cool crew. Uh, the production went well and we're releasing it on Sunday. I just started interning at uh, a nonprofit organization in New Haven. They're called Psych Projects um, and they commission artwork all around the city of New Haven. Also, my, my advertisement company, Real Advertisements, we just started doing projection advertisement. Uh, I literally spent my last dollar on a, a projector and I just started shopping it around and we have a couple spots on Boston Post Road in Milford project a 30-foot image and video of their, their showroom 
and some of their logos and stuff like that, but we project it onto their storefront and we ultimately turn their their storefront into a billboard. Got hired by a major league barbershop in West Haven to do their film work. I think it, it's 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 cool too because I, I take things as they come. You know, you can't really expect things to work out the way that you want them to or sometimes you, you don't expect things to happen that do and I think that's just the, the excitement of it all. Yeah, the, the Occupy movement was that documentary was, was cool. We um, actually didn't hear about the whole thing happening until like the fifth day. Uh, and I caught it on some internet blog, but it just blew my mind that, that people were protesting on one of the most powerful streets in our country and there was no mainstream news media about it. And it got to the seventh and the eighth, and, you know, the ninth day and people still weren't reporting on it. And it, it kind of blew my mind, like the conflict of interest was almost obvious, you know, and it, it makes sense because a lot of the, the Wall Street guys are the ones who run the media. When me and one of my friends went up, I grabbed the camera and um, we just, I just filmed the day. You know, we had conversations with people and I got to really kind of get my own observations on the movement. And uh, I came home and we just started doing research and I got to tell you, like, some of the things that I discovered just blew my mind, you know, about just the, the extreme inequality of the distribution of wealth in our country is it's almost sickening, you know, and I think that the, the Occupy movement, it, it, it's great in terms of awareness and raising awareness and, and getting people to just realize that, you know, things don't have to be this way. You know, there's, there's a, a recession right now that almost seems orchestrated, and, you know, and it, it affects us all in, in such a great way that the fact that more people aren't upset kind of, you know, amazes me. I think before anything, you know, I think it's just super necessary to teach really uh, vulnerable minds in philosophy. You know, I think that harvests the most creativity because philosophy, it, it puts a perspective on, on your existence. Once people have a little bit more of a grasp on reality, um, it'll allow for creativity to grow, you know, and it'll allow people to feel more comfortable doing what it is that they want to do as opposed to doing something that they feel they have to do. One of my biggest uh, battles in life is just the, the constant, constant war on traditional thinking. Creativity is the foundation for all great things. You know, it, it really, it drives our culture. Um, it leads for innovations, inventions, uh, progression. And I think it's just necessary, it's crucial to just hold on to that creativity in the future is something that lives within all of us. If you don't think you're creative, you are creative. You know, and the only reason you might not think you're creative is based off of another person's perception of creativity. So, you know, I think just stay open to life, let the creativity kind of grow, be aware, be observant, and just, you know, be a sponge. It's a lot to soak in, but, you know, the more you know, the more creative you can be.